Worried about gout? Check out Ural, the effective urinary alkalinizer for gout. Good evening, this is Kini News and I'm your host, Camelia. Parliament after GE15 may be rather quiet after one of UMNO's most local lawmakers has been dropped as a candidate by BN. With the coalition choosing someone else to contest in Pasir Salak, Tajuddin's men are far from happy and have accused Zahid Hamidi of destroying the division. Pasir Salak UMNO division leaders have denounced the party's decision to drop incumbent MP Tajuddin Abdul Rahman as a candidate in GE15. Openly rejecting Karul Azwan Harun as the new candidate, the group expressed sardonic gratitude particularly directed at BN Chairperson Ahmad Zaid Hamidi. Pasir Salak UMNO Vice Chief and Tajuddin's son Dr Faisal Tajuddin had claimed that their decision to field Tajuddin as a candidate for a fourth term was ignored and cast aside. Hampir 3,000 tekanan ahli-ahli UMNO akan beri menyokong untuk mengekalkan beliau sebagai Parlimen yang sangat yang kita sampaikan juga kepada beliau dan we accumulated within just 24 hours if we had more time, I think we can get the all signatures from members Tapi masih lagi uh, nama Datuk Tajuddin tolak sebagai calon di Parlimen. Once again, terima kasih. The petition cited by Malaysia Kini was addressed to Zahid, UMNO Vice President, Ismail Sabri Yaakob and Madzir Khalid and Perak Menteri Besar, Sarani Muhammad. The group also accused Zahid of destroying the unity of the UMNO Pasir Salak Division. The group then unveiled a banner that read, quote, Thank you, President, for destroying the unity of Pasir Salak UMNO. As well as questioning the party's strategy, Faisal also condemned Karul for accepting the candidacy for the parliamentary seat. He said if Karul was a team player, he would have respected the division's collective decision. Tajuddin wasn't the only big name from UMNO to be dropped. We also have Shahidan and Anwar Musa, both of whom are expected to contest under different symbols. Incumbent Arau MP Shaidan Kasim is in the process of deciding which symbol he will use to run in GE15. When contacted by Malay Sekini, the candidate who was dropped by BN said that only the unification of Amno Bersatu and PAS ticket was available to him now. He said by competing like this, he believes that PAS, Amno and Bersatu will support him. Shahidan has served four terms as Arau MP. He also served as Perlis Menteri Besar for 13 years until 2008. The former minister said that his candidacy under the Perikatan National Umbrella was a sign of opposition to UMNO President Ahmad Zaid Hamidi who axed him from defending a seat for BN. He said he will be a candidate against Zahid but not BN. He said this is because Zahid is someone who broke trust, cheated and he has a court case so he should not be eligible to be chosen as a candidate. Elsewhere, another discarded UMNO leader, Anwar Musa, appeared to be teasing a possible run in his incumbent constituency of Kutre under the Muafakat National Banner. BN's candidate announcement last night was missing something, MIC leaders. However, the party president denied that they were boycotting the event. MIC has decided that the party will contest in the 15th general election. The decision was announced by MIC President S.A. Vigneswaran following an emergency Central Working Committee meeting today. It was previously reported that MIC was considering pulling out of GE15 due to unhappiness over the seat allocations. MIC was notably absent from BN's candidate announcement event last night. However, Vigneswaran denied there was a boycott. No, 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 no. Ini bukan pasal boycott. Apa boycott? He also stressed today that MIC is satisfied with the seats they were given. Uh, banyak yang dikatakan bahawa uh, biar, uh, di mana friends of BN dan sebagainya yang we are not very happy padahal uh, to be fair to the Pengurusi Barisan Nasional Dr. Sui Ahmad, Dr. Ahmad Zaid kita uh, uh, saya ataupun kita telah bersetuju if they want to give a seat to them uh, kerana setelah lama it's okay, we are not against it as long as uh, our seats are not uh, affected. 
Now that seat allocations have been completed, Vigne Soren said he hopes the finalist candidates will be accepted with open hearts by the machinery and grassroots. Regardless of differences in opinions, he hopes BN component parties can work together to bring victory to all coalition candidates. MIC will contest 10 parliamentary seats in GE15. Speaking of MIC, there appears to be some confusion over which BN party is set to contest in Batu, with MIC and MCA leaders contradicting each other. MCA says it has reached an agreement with MIC to exchange the Batu parliamentary seat for Padang Sarai. MCA President Wika Siong revealed that the consensus was reached with BN Chief Ahmad Zaid Hamidi yesterday. We said the Padang Sarai parliamentary seat will be handed over to MIC and the Batu parliamentary seat will go to MCA. In a press conference at Wisma MCA in Kuala Lumpur today, we said the party needed to clarify the situation to avoid confusion. In the press conference, Yu Tiong Luk was announced as the candidate for the Batu parliamentary seat. Yesterday, a coherent play was announced as the BN candidate for the Batu seat at the BN candidate announcement. However, at a separate press conference today, MIC President S.A. Vigne Swaran dismissed MCA's assertion that the party will contest the Batu seat instead of MIC. Vigne Swaran said any announcements related to seats within BN must be done by the coalition's chairperson, Ahmad Zaid Hamidi. Gombak is said to be an uphill battle for Azmin Ali as he faces giants without the help of his former mentor, Dr. Mahathir Mohamad. Amno in Gombak is expecting Azmin Ali to struggle in GE15 without the help of Dr. Mahathir Mohamad. Gomba Amno Division Chief Magat Zulkarnain Omardin believes this is mainly due to the Mahathir factor. He said this is why Bersatu Supreme Council member Azmin managed to retain his seat with a bigger majority in GE14. He said Mahathir's presence in Bersatu at the time made many Gomba voters swing to support Pakatan Harapan. Contrary to PKR Deputy President Rafizi Ramli, saying Mahathir did not help Harapan win Malay voters, Magat Zulkarnain said many Gobak voters had swung from BN to support Mahathir's allies. Magat Zulkarnain added that Mahathir has a big support base in Gombak. Azmin is expected to defend the Gombak seat where he will be facing PKR's Amiruddin Shari. At the BN event last night, candidates were also made to take an oath, possibly putting an end to the era of political frogs. BN coalition members must resign as an MP if they are expelled from their respective parties. All BN candidates had to publicly take an oath of allegiance at a ceremony at the BN headquarters in Kuala Lumpur last night. Recent amendments to the federal constitution stipulated that MPs who switch parties midterm or become an independent will be forced to vacate their seat. However, the law does not require an MP to vacate a seat if they are expelled from the party. The oath also saw BN candidates swearing that they will abide by all the terms of their contract with the coalition. Details of the contract have not been publicly revealed. The candidates pledged that they will uphold the federal constitution and fulfill their responsibilities with honesty. Should they be involved in the abuse of power and corruption, any inducements they receive will be haram saharam haramnya. BN Elections Director and AMNO Deputy President Mohamed Hassan led the oath-taking ceremony. Last night, BN revealed a partial list of candidates for GE15. More announcements are expected today. Zahid can focus on politics fully this year because his Akal Budi case has been pushed to 2023. Former Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zaid Hamidi's corruption trial involving Yayasan Akal Budi funds has been postponed to January next year. This is pending an appeal over a ruling in relation to witnesses' statements. High Court Judge Colin Lawrence Sequeira vacated the hearing today and tomorrow as well as on November 9th and 10th. This comes after Zayed's lead counsel, Hisham Teh Poetek, applied to postpone the trial. The judge fixed 21 days for the hearing, beginning January 16th. Earlier, they said the defence requested to adjourn the trial pending Zayed's appeal against the High Court's dismissal of his application to obtain recorded statements of 15 witnesses from the MACC. He said the appeal is scheduled to be heard on November 14th at the Court of Appeal. He also said that a witness from Bagandato, who was supposed to testify today, was unwell and the defence did not have any other witnesses to call for the time being. So far, the defence has called six witnesses, including Zahid. Zahid is facing 47 charges for criminal breach of trust, corruption and money laundering, involving tens of millions of ringgit belonging to the foundation. 
And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to militiakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.